Hello fellow racers and welcome to this little video where we'll be talking about settings on the wheel and basically especially the request I got from my community, the buttons on my wheel, what I use, how do I use it and basically why. And it's gonna be very short guys, hopefully it's gonna be a very short video. Uh, maybe some people will say, well I have a different wheel. It doesn't matter because we're going to be talking about the functions for the Assetto Corsa Commissione. So maybe you'll be able to, to set them like what is the most important uh, feature or, uh, or button for you. And you can use it or apply it to your own wheel. So uh, yeah, let's get into it guys. Obviously we are in Assetto Corsa Competizione. Uh, I'm using my Fanatec Clubs for Formula V2 wheel guys. And basically we can start with the obvious for the buttons. Uh... I'm basically using most of the buttons on a wheel, guys. So basically, left buttons, I'm, I'm trying to use everything, guys. Okay, basically this video, why people ask me is because I'm trying to ma make like a most effective way what buttons, where to have on a wheel, so it's the most easiest. Because there is several buttons for Assetto Corsa Competition that are super, super important and you have to have them as easy, manageable as possible. We will get into it, but of course, we will start with the obvious, guys, because you, know, you want to know what uh, buttons do I use. So, I'm gonna just go around, guys. We're gonna maybe even drive a little bit, but... Okay. Each button's on the sides. Very simple. Left look, right look. If I close them together, I look back. The reason I have them on the thumbs right here is because sometimes when the on the start of the race, I have to look very, very quickly and I don't wanna, like, uh, push any button around, you know? So basically, this is like... I, I don't even do any extra movement on a wheel. Sorry for my beautiful hands, guys. We're gonna do like a sensual rubbing. So basically on the start of the race, I'm starting like this. Literally, guy on my right, quickly, quickly look on the right. What's happening behind? What's happening behind? Quickly, quickly, go left, go left, and drive. Very simple, of course, very easy. Uh, good thing on Fanatec, you can actually change the button so you can have whatever you want. But it doesn't matter what, uh, really depends what wheel are you using, guys. Uh, of course, then my most favorite, flash button. Again, very close uh, to me, so I don't even have any problem Finding the button. Very, very simple. I'm going basically from the most easy to most difficult buttons, guys. So bear with me. I don't know if, it, if it's going to be boring or not for you guys, but uh, this is how it is. Here is my pit speed limiter. Uh, usually most of the races we have automatic pit limiter. But uh, anyway, this is where it is. I try to have everything as close as possible because it's very important. Because when you are in the race, you're fighting, doing stuff, you know, all around driving and such. You don't want to be looking for the buttons all over the place, you know. Then basically, uh, I go for the lights. I'm using my lights here. Uh, the reason why is because this basically this button has no other function for me. And it's very easy to use. On the top right as well, using my white screen wipers, basically cycling white screen wipers, very easy to control. The reason why I have it here is because, as well, I can do flashing, and as well, in some of the races you are using just a little small light speed, or light speed, sorry, la small speed or slower speed of the white screen wiper, and sometimes I need to cycle quickly and go back to driving, so may sometimes I'm even like, when it's raining just a little bit, I have my white screen wiper off, and then I do just a little quick cycle, you know, to turn it off, you know, like this. So that's the reason why I use it uh, in this order, guys. I'm not saying my buttons are the ideal, guys, but uh, this is how I use it, and it works very well for me. Uh, then we go to the bottom, basically, of the wheel, guys. I'm gonna go, like, slowly up and down. It's good, it's, you know, it'll be very short, guys. Uh, one of the very most important buttons for me is for uh, ignition and the starter. So I'm using the buttons at the bottom. Ignition. Hold the starter. The reason why I use it like this is because, of course, like, the I use the Xbox button on my wheel as a starter because, like, obvious, the other button for ignition. These two buttons are, for me, the most important, almost one of the most important, because most of the races I actually do are uh, with the pit stops. And the pit stops are really, really important in this game, because you can gain them as much time as you can get. We are in a hot lap, so I don't know if the pit stop works, so we can just check it out. So basically, when I go into the pits, Low stay away from curves. the reason why I'm using these two buttons, I will show you in a bit, we will maybe stop on a spot, it doesn't matter, I know if it actually works in the hot lap mode. So we go into the pits. Is there a spot? Okay, they don't show our spot. So basically I go for my pit stop. Maybe you can show it in some of the video, from some of the races. 
I have an ignition button on. Stop on a spot, turn off the ignition, they immediately take you out. And start working on your car if you stop correctly. You can use the starter button, but I don't like it because you have to hold it to turn off. So I basically kill the engine with the ignition. While they are doing the pit stop, I turn the ignition back on. Don't forget about it, sometimes I forget. And they are working on a car, the mechanics. You can see it in the video from some of my races. And one is like one second before the end of the pit stop. I'm already holding the starter and go. <clears throat> That's like my most effective how to make a pit stop with these cars, you know, with this car overall. It was very, very good. Uh, of course, you can, as I said, you can use it. You can stop like this and use the starter. It's way easier for some of the people. I personally don't like it because uh, I have to hold it too long, you know. And I, I prefer that just to press the button, basically, you know. It, it, for me, it makes it a little easier. But of course, use whatever you guys prefer. It, it really depends on your wheel, on your buttons, where you have everything, have you, have you everything put. Another button that's very important, basically, is the engine map. Like, uh, engine map, I'm using, most of the time, I'm using engine map 1. On a Porsche, you're using engine map 8, the most effective one, efficient one. And uh, <clears throat> then if you need to save the fuel or stuff like that, you just, or it's raining, you change your engine maps. Basically, even in the rain, guys, I'm using engine map 1. I'm basically trying to work my setup around it, because you get maximum power on the straights. It really depends about your capabilities of driving. But, or if you want to save the, 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 if you want to save the, the fuel in a formation lab, for example, and such. Don't forget to put it back to one. It's my specialty. I always go like, eh, let's save some fuel in a hot lap mode, you know, and uh, then I'm starting the race on engine map eight and, or maximum engine map, and I'm wondering why I cannot drive faster, you know? So I go back. Like this, you know, we can circle all, all the stages, basically, like that. Sorry, so I can show it on the camera properly. Engine map one. The fastest one on all the cars, except Porsche, which is 8. Then I have a change in my dash. I don't use that at all, this button, but I just fancy having the option for it. But it's really like not changing the dashboard at all, basically. Uh, then we are getting to the obvious. Uh, traction control and uh, brake bias, I would say, is the most important. Before that, I have the ABS. ABS button is for me on the up and down button here. It really depends... On the race conditions and everything, really about your setup, but anyway, when it starts raining, you want to go on your ABS up. If it stops raining, you want to go low. Uh, maybe if you have a little different wear on the tires, you can add or lower the ABS during where you are driving as well. It really depends on your driving uh, setup and conditions and the length of the race. There we go to the most important buttons for me, like basically, last three buttons that are the most important for the Assetto Corsa. For me, traction control. I have it on a roller, on the left side, to have it as close as possible, so I can just roll over. So basically what I'm driving, I need to change the traction control, I don't even go off my wheel on the exits of the corners and such. I don't know, you can even see the move on the camera, hopefully you can. Just rolling a little bit, giving, changing the from, from one up and down. The reason I have it here is on this wheel, this, this wheel is perfect for the racing these cars or this game basically It's because you have the roller button so close You can put it on the buttons as well, but I like the roller because it's so simple So basically the reason you don't need the TC button that much But of course if uh, the tire wear is higher if the conditions are bad if it starts raining or uh, your uh, you have a damage or whatever so basically sometimes you want to save the tires so in the upcoming corner, I go for TC3, I can nicely brake, do the corner, you know. And in the next corner, I know it's a little hairpin, so I go on a 2TC, and so on. You know, it's very easy, very easy move, you don't, you don't waste any time or anything like that. So it's very, very simple. For me, it's very effective and very simple to use. Because the TC is important, especially in the rain or in a different conditions, getting colder, hotter. Different on the star, different in some of the corners, you know, because in, let's say, Suzuka, in a hairpin, you want to go to lower DC, you know, to like one, but the rest of the lap you're using, for example, higher number, it really depends on your car and such, you know? So, I like this, like, on a roll button. It's like, you don't even see probably on a video too good, but this roll button, I'm just having, it's step by step, you know? You can, like, yeah, step by step. On the other roller button, I have my brake bias. It's basically the same as TC. My brake bias is very important because, for example, on the start of the race, I go higher a little bit. When it starts raining, you want to go lower. 
and you want to uh, adjust your uh, brake bias as much as possible. Really depends, like, uh, on, like, you have a different brake bias at the start of the race, then on the end of the race as well, before the pit stops, after the pit stops, in the different various conditions, and so on, so on, so on. So very simple, very effective. Then we go basically to the last, the most important, I'm gonna kill the engine, last, the most important button for me is the MFD button, guys. I use the joystick on the right side because, uh, well, it's a joystick, very simple. If you press it, it's a confirm. If you go left, right, you go on an MFD. Uh, actually, it doesn't show everything on a, on a hot lap right now where we are, but uh, you can just circle through the, oh, there's nothing, literally. Uh, okay, let's go to the race so I can show you properly. Okay, so when we are in race conditions, basically, you can change, you can see the differences on the button. We will let the let the AIs go. So MFD button, the most important on this for the race conditions, basically for anything, especially when you have a pit stops, especially when the conditions change and everything. I press the button to swap the pages, so I can cycle through the MFD. This page, very important, uh, you can change like engine map, wipers, everything, rain light, indicators, whatever. A lot of people use this when they don't have many buttons on their wheel, so they can change the TC and ABS and such. But of course, when I have everything uh, on the other sides of the wheel, it's already very effective for me, but I don't need to use it. But, for the pit stop, it's very important. You go to the pit stops, you want to change the fuel, the amount of the fuel, you want to change the tire sets, Dry setups, you want to change the tire pressures very easily and very quickly. Go through the cycle, whatever you want to do. Confirm repairs, com unconfirm repairs, and everything like that. This button is one of the most important in most of the races, because if you have a mandatory pit stop of pit stop overall or doing endurance, whatever, this is the most important one. You choose the teammates and everything and such. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what I would say. It's the most important button. That's basically all the buttons important for this game, because, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else we need to go through, guys. Uh, when you're wondering about my, uh, about my uh, force feedback and such, guys, I'm using 720 uh, degrees of rotation on my wheel. If we go into the option, I can show you properly. I'm using 720 steering lock on a wheel. It's very simple why. It's because uh, that's what they use in real life, or it's very close to real life. Uh, the reason for that is basically if you if you use above 900, you have to steer a lot in the cars, and it's not like way like it's not realistic because in real life they are using like 540, 640, 720 degrees on the race cars. You know they have a li little different uh, steering inputs and such. So I, I found out in this game the best that works for me. I, w I used to I was using 540. But it actually wasn't that good. Because uh, it was way too sensitive. It was good at the beginning of the game. It was giving me good control of the car. But uh, when they updated, like three months ago, they updated the, the graining on the tires and everything. So the lower the steering lock you're using, the less you have to steer, of course. But you destroy the tires way quicker in this game right now. So basically it's good to find a good... Uh, like a middle way, you know? I feel like the 720 works for me the best so far. 65 uh, gain, dampening 200% on my CSL Elite, and all the buttons you can see on the right, guys. So, that's probably it, I would say. I'm not using any custom settings on my wheel overall. I'm basically just using the 720 degrees. 720 degrees in the game as well. It works very, very well. Very, very well. <laughs> and, I mean, I, that's basically it, I would say. It's all my buttons on the wheel. We got checked. Uh... All the important stuff, how to make everything efficient in this game, all the buttons you need to use is, is there. And yeah, if you, if you want to check these settings, guys, by the way, I have the screenshot on my schedule. So if you check the links below the video, guys, make sure to leave a like and make sure to check it on me on the Twitter. Join our fantastic Discord community as well. And I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much. Bye bye.